talk more about that and more. We are joined now by Roger Cohen. He was a foreign correspondent and editor with the New York Times, now a columnist with the paper. He wrote about the crisis and the controversy this week in the Times. And Miriam Elders, the foreign editor with BuzzFeed, she joins us now as well. So, Roger, let me start with you because uh, you you are one of the voices uh, uh, who weighed in, and, and it's, it's sort of similar to what we heard in that Jonathan uh, uh, Chait piece that we quoted this week. Um, I, I wonder that broader issue that he raises there because it, it, I think to, to outside observers, it feels like we get to this point every few years where there are rockets being lobbed into Israel from Gaza. Israel launches a military operation and says it's our duty to protect our citizens and to you know, to, to get you know, disarm these rockets and to get these tunnels, whatever. And up being uh, there's all sorts of civilian uh, uh, destruction and then we sort of repeat three years later is there a mo are we reaching a moment here when people are stopping and saying there has to be a diplomatic track to this too I think we are reaching a moment but it's a particularly ugly moment and uh, the whole situation has become very intractable Steve particularly with this apparent capture of an Israeli soldier I think Jonathan Chait's point and the point I tried to make is an important one, and that is that Secretary Kerry, as you know, was in Israel more than 20 times over the previous nine months. And I haven't seen anything that said to me that the government of Prime Minister Netanyahu was serious about trying to reach out to Palestinian moderates. The result is that this status quo continues, and part of that status quo is this violence. Now, right now, feelings are running so high on both sides and you have 60 IDF soldiers or so dead you have more than 1600 dead in Gaza and it's fueled to a point where I don't see how you tamp it down well so, so Miriam let me pick that point up with you because those numbers we read really jump out at you you know 87 support percent support for the operation among Israeli Jews 95 percent overall saying this is justified and I, I just look at that and I say with that kind of support I mean that's the that's the level in this country to give you an idea in this country George W Bush had that in the weeks after 9-11 and basically you can remember in this country George W Bush basically could have done anything with that kind of support that's what Netanyahu has right now and so if there's any international calls here for hey tone it down a little bit or get to the negotiating table there's no incentive for him to do that, is there? No, I think there's no incentive at all. And it's kind of two things we have to talk about. Uh, one is, you know, global condemnation on a kind of human level of the killing that we're seeing in Gaza versus a real change on the diplomatic front. We've seen some tougher language um, out of Obama, but I, I can't say that we've seen any real shift. The fact that the Europeans are really upset about this is, is nothing new. I'm not sure that we've seen... I feel like we're seeing kind of... It's the beginning of this idea that maybe Israel, Israel is reacting disproportionately, but I'm not sure that's translated yet into a diplomatic thing. Well, is, there, is there a shift? Are you picking up at all within Israel? Where, when you see numbers like that, do you think maybe in the past there would have been more of a divide? There would have been more, you know, more people saying skeptically, eh, I'm not sure the government should be doing this. Is there a shift in Israel where they're becoming more hardline? Yeah, absolutely. I think the right has been growing uh, more and more, and the left has been marginalized. And uh, you have a government that's been kind of putting forward this line of uh, security above all else, else and really talking up the threat, a threat that does exist, but, um, and just understands that, you know, playing to these fears is a way for it to also remain in power. That's why I'm also against these terms, sort of pro-Israel and, and pro-Palestinian. We should be talking about the government that's, that's in power. You know, Israel as the country. Sure. Well, so, but so Roger, I mean, again, those those numbers. When you look at them, uh, th that basically unanimous support in Israel that exists for the government and for what it's doing right now. What does that say to you? Look, Steve, Israelis are spooked. These tunnels have really spooked Israelis. Uh, if you were living there and were thinking that some militants could pop out of the ground at any moment and start shooting you, uh, look what happened in the Washington area at the time of the sniper. It wasn't necessarily rational. The chances you were going to get shot when you went to a gas station were low. Nevertheless, everyone was spooked. And that's the feeling uh, right now in Israel. There's a feeling that there's an organization there which in its charter calls for the annihilation of the state of Israel. And it has built a series of tunnels that have led to a series of attacks that ha are causing what is close, from what I'm hearing, to a state of rage and near psychosis in Israel. And that is the feeling, that is the sentiment uh, behind those numbers you're seeing. Those are extraordinary numbers uh, in a battle or mini war uh, where you're seeing, as we know, very uneven casualties but Israelis feel 
that this organization, uh, bent on its destruction, is getting stronger, that no state can live with these rockets being fired in day after day. And the operation now which uh, began uh, on the ground has a momentum of its own. And Secretary Kerry was not even, look, all he was trying to get was a 24-hour initially uh, ceasefire that would allow uh, some talks to begin. He wasn't even able uh, to get that. So the fears many of us have had that this could explode at any moment have been proved, unfortunately, to be right. Yeah, John Kerry, Secretary of State, being excoriated in in the Israeli media this week, and those numbers, I think, explain uh, the, the sort of the sentiments behind those numbers explain where that was coming from. My thanks, though, to Roger Cohn from the New York Times, BuzzFeed's Miriam Elder. Appreciate the time.